Liz, it's Gerald. At the Free Library of Philadelphia, our mission is to advance literacy, guide learning, and inspire curiosity. And we do that every day at our 54 branches across the city. With 54 branches, that means that no resident is further than three miles from their closest branch. And in fact, most of us are quite a great deal closer. Um, and in a city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, the Free Library really is the heart of the community. At the Free Library, we have many things that you may expect or already be familiar with. We have millions of print and digital resources. The latter includes things like Overdrive and Libby, where you can download basically any children, teens, or adult ebook to read. We have things like um, Mango Languages, where you can brush up on your Italian in the hopes that your husband is planning a secret trip for your 10th wedding anniversary. <laughs> We also have uh, something called Linda, where you can enroll in online courses in everything from weightlifting to learning how to be a consultant. Um, at our libraries, we have 25,000 programs every year, and those include things like our author events. We recently just had Tom Hanks. Um, and we also have events on our skyline um, and our terrace at the Parkway Central Library. Um, there are beer gardens, has anyone been? They are amazing, it's a really great view. It's so hard to see the hands with the lights. Um, and we also have some really great special collections. Uh, our special collections have this really fantastic exhibit that's happening right now, Our Changing City, and it takes a look at Philadelphia and the changing landscape around transportation and the architecture and our, our parks. It's amazing and I think you all should go and take a look. Um, but we also have five million people who come into our libraries every year, and five million visitors who uh, go to our website. If our website was a branch, it would be the busiest one that we have. Um, our libraries also boast some really beautiful buildings, like this one. It's our Lillian Marrero Library at 6th and Lehigh, and it was renovated recently as a part of our 21st Century Library Initiative. So libraries, like a lot of other cultural institutions, schools, businesses, city agencies, we really need to be thinking a lot about how we can reinvent and reimagine ourselves so that we can meet the ever-changing needs of our communities. And at the Free Library, some of that innovation looks like our book bike. We have a number of book bikes, actually, and what they are are tricked-out cargo bikes that have a small library built right into the front of them. So our librarians can hop on and uh, ride them to a park, to a community center, to a health fair, and take the library to the community directly. We have a tie library. If you want to check out a tie to look spiffy for your job interview, you can go to the Pascalville Library in Southwest Philadelphia. We have a, a musical instrument lending library at the Parkway Central's music department. You can go there and you can check out a ukulele, an electric guitar, an amp, um, a bass, a keyboard, many different things at the music lending library. We also have some other interesting lending collections like a um, cake pan lending library. We have bird watching backpacks that you can get at the Andorra branch, very close to here. Um, so we have a lot of really cool things that are going out, not just books. We have a program through our prison services program called Stories Alive, where parents and families who are separated by incarceration can reconnect over Skype so that parents can read storybooks to their children in our libraries. We also have new play spaces in many of our libraries. They include structures like this one, but also climbing walls, so that children and youth who are coming to our libraries after school for homework help can also burn off a little bit of energy by climbing on one of these guys. And we have the Culinary Literacy Center. It's a commercial grade kitchen classroom on the fourth floor of our Parkway Central Library. We opened in 2014, and we are the first space of its kind in a library in the country. And since we opened, we've seen 30,000 people at our center and also in our neighborhood libraries at culinary literacy programs. Okay, so why a kitchen in a library? Sorry, why a kitchen in a library? Because libraries and cooking provide unlimited and endless opportunities for building communities and lifelong learning. 
But what is culinary literacy? What, what is this culinary literacy center built on? We define culinary literacy both as learning about cooking and learning through cooking. And the things that you can learn about cooking in our space include knife skills. So you can brush up or learn from scratch your knife skills. Um, you can learn about um, how to fillet a fish, how to butcher a hog, how to make a vegan African stew, how to can peach jam. You can also learn through cooking. And when we're learning through cooking, the things that we're learning are math through measuring, or science through the baking of chocolate chip cookies, or science through fermenting. Um, and you can learn reading. So reading a recipe, following the instructions, learning the names of tools or ingredients. Our public programs that we offer bring people from Philadelphia together at our table so that they can learn, cook, share, and eat together. At our public programs, you can learn how to bake a pie from your favorite cookbook author, or how to bake fresh pasta from your favorite local chef. Our public programs are hugely popular. We, in fact, had people who were scalping tickets to our mozzarella cheese making class on our Facebook page. <laughs> Um, I had friends calling me begging to see if I could get them tickets to the family class with Federal Donuts that's happening on Saturday. And the answer to them and to you all is, um, no, I'm sorry, but please look at our website for the next class we'll do with them. Um, at our public classes, more than half of the participants are between the ages of 20 and 40, which is a really magical demographic for libraries. It's a demographic that we tend to lose. But we are bringing people in in this unique entry point to the library through our cooking classes. And our cooking classes for the public have a small fee of zero to $40. And that fee offsets the cost of our special programs. So our special programs are for targeted populations, including Edible Alphabet, our programs for English language learners, refugees, immigrants, people who are new to Philadelphia or have lived here decades, so that they can learn English through cooking. We have programs for adults with disabilities. Our program, Cooking with Confidence, is for adults with autism. And it provides a space for them to learn new techniques and taste new foods, but also a really warm and welcome community environment for them to build friendships. We have a program called Cookability, which is for people with low vision. And that class is taught by a blind chef. Through a partnership with the Philadelphia Department of Public Health, our Healthy Communities Initiative brings not only culinary literacy cooking programs to neighborhood libraries, but also physical wellness and mental wellness programs. And we were able to build a raised bed garden at the Lillian Marrero Library. Summertime Cooks is our summer cooking camp for youth in grades five through 12. And once a week, the students meet in the Culinary Literacy Center, and they learn how to make a dish. And then they get sent home with local uh, ingredients, produce, so that they can recreate the meal at home for their families. And they do. We get students who come in with pictures that they took on their phone of very pleased parents and siblings around a table eating a quiche or a cobbler that they made. And Nourishing Literacy is our program for school-aged children, and we bring about 100 classes into the Culinary Literacy Center every school year, where our youngest students are learning the science of plant parts while they are tearing up bits of kale leaves and carrots that are the roots and shelling edamame beans for the seeds. They then get roasted in the ovens and tossed with cheesy buttery noodles. And all of the five and six-year-olds ask for seconds of this delicious roasted vegetable medley. Um, it's a really special class, and we, we see kids from preschool all the way up through high school. And the older students get a chance to really dig into the, the food systems, and, and we turn our kitchen into a fast, casual restaurant where they are all assigned different tasks, like shelling beans or being a hostess or cooking the rice for our plant part burritos. Um, it's a really great class. It is very high energy. Um, and we, we do get about 30 to 35 students in there at once, all cooking at the same time. Now, I just wanted to ask you all, what do you think is the most important culinary skill that you can learn? Washing the dishes. Okay. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Nutrition, yes. 
Patience, absolutely. There is a, an, a hard skill that I am gonna actually let our children tell you in this video of what the most important skill in the kitchen to have is. Are you ready to learn how to wash your hands? I'm gonna teach you. First step. Put your hands under the water. Do you feel the water? Pull your hands out of the water. And don't put them back in. Second step. Get some soap. Put it on your hair. Now make bubbles. Step three. One, two, two three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. Step four. Now wash all the soap away. Let's rinse them off. Step five. Get yourself a paper towel. Now it's time to dry your hands. Dry your hands real good. We open our trash can with our foot. Because you don't want to get the germs onto your hand. We just <laughs> wash our hands. Now you're ready to cook. And now you all know, so thank you so much.